So let's talk about those drugs that directly act on the receptors. Let's cover the blockers of those receptors first. So alpha blockers are non-selective and selective. The non-selective alpha blockers are phenoxybenzamine and phentolamine. I, I want you to remember these drugs. I'm only going to pick the ones that are going that you're going to be tested on. There are literally hundreds within each class, so let's just focus on the important ones, but you do need to know them. The alpha-1 selective agent of choice is prazosin, and the alpha-2 selective agent is yohimbine. I've never used yohimbine in clinical practice, but I always remember it because it's the one that we had to memorize for exams. Let's talk about beta blockers now. The non-selective prototypical beta blocker is propranolol. Beta-1 selective agent, the example that we always use is atenolol, which is kind of an older beta blocker and replaced by newer ones, but it's the prototypical one that I want you to remember. Beta-2 selective beta blockers is butoxamine, which is almost never used clinically, but it's important for research and is the pro it is the prototypical drug, so you do need to know it. Beta blockers that start with the letters A to M are generally those drugs that tend to be beta-1 selective and useful for cardiac inhibition. Acebutalol, atenolol, bisoprolol, esmolol, labetalol, metoprolol. Those are the commonly used clinical ones. But if you remember, A to M is beta-1 selective, and for the heart, you'll, you'll be a long way. The, the uh, beta blockers that start with C, C stands for cardiac, and these are the drugs we tend to use in cardiac failure. So the prototypical drug of the heart failure beta blockers is carvedilol. And the reason why carvedilol is so unique is because it has combined alpha and beta activity, so it helps those patients in heart failure seemingly more than the other beta blockers. Now, beta blockers that start with letters between N and Z, or N and Z, tend to be non-selective beta blockers. Nadolol, nabivolol, pindolol, propranolol, timolol. These are all non-selective beta blockers. Let's go into more detail with the beta-1 blockers. Remember that the more selective the drug is for the beta-1 receptor, the better it is for the lung because you have fewer lung side effects. Remember, you don't want to have beta-2 blocking activity with your beta blocker. With rhythm control, it's great for breaking supraventricular tachycardias, preventing ventricular tachycardias, and it helps with rate control in atrial fibrillation. We also use beta-1 blockers in heart failure, but only after the patient has been stabilized. I often use beta blockade in blood pressure control, and interestingly enough, we can use propranolol for anxiety. Propranolol was one of the first drugs of the beta blocker class, and we discovered that people who tended to get stage fright or anxious in front of a crowd would often take propranolol. It would help calm down that thumping heart sensation, and people did quite well. I still use this in my practice to treat patients who get stage fright, and you'd be surprised how many times I have to treat people for it. A little secret that's kind of fun, if you take propranolol before a lie detector test, you'll, you, it's possible that you'll pass the lie detector test without getting in trouble. But just don't tell the FBI I said that. What about beta blockers in pregnancy? So labetalol is the most used blood pressure drug in pregnancy. We have over a million woman years of experience using labetalol as blood pressure control. I use it all the time in my pregnant hypertensive patients. It's a beautiful drug. It's nice, it's balanced, it's got both alpha and beta activity. And the nice thing about that is that it prevents reduced placental flow. It has a huge, wide therapeutic window. So we can go anywhere from 100 milligrams a day to 2,400 milligrams a day, and people have tolerated it based on their dose. <laughs>